Yo, what's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Um, let's get into it right quick. Uh, Drake put out a very candid, probably the most candid interview he's ever done, I believe, with Rap Radar. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it is Rap Radar. And it's about two hours long. You know, I'm like, that's longer than the damn Star Wars movie. But it was well worth it. And it was very informative. And it was like he was clearing his soul. Like he needed someone to talk to. Like he needed the vent. And a lot of people are just going to take the pusher stuff out of it and roll with that. But he spoke on a lot of different issues uh, that was going on in his life. And he was very candid. More candid than he was in the, the thing he did with LeBron and and I, and I felt that a lot of the things he was talking about kind of got, you know, people kind of missed what he was going through. Uh, he kind of spoke on a lot of, you know, hidden pains. You know, people see celebrities and entertainers in the industry, and they don't really understand, like, what they go through, and they're, like, surprised that the celebrities do the same thing we do, like, they're not people. And it's amazing, man. You see the the power of stardom. It just it, it affects people that they don't even they can't even see themselves. If somebody showed them a videotape of themselves, they'd probably be disgusted. Like that's me. It's like yeah, dude, that's you jumping up and down like a three year old for somebody that's twenty years younger than you. You know, you're doing stuff like your little kid should do. You know, but they can't help it. They caught in the stardom. And sometimes they lose track that people are just as real as anything else. Like, they just as real as you. And Drake brought up some very interesting points. And that's why on One Crack News, I let you guys kind of hear it out. And I didn't want to intervene or, or jump his words or talk over him. I wanted y'all to hear some of it clearly so y'all can hear how candid he sounded in the interview. Because he, he, was, he was meaning a lot of everything he said. You know, like, this is truly how he feels. Um, he went through, like, all these issues in his life that touched on everything. How the Quentin Miller situation happened and how he just took the, like, look, I'll take that L if you want me to take it for Pusha T. You know, like, this guy's career has really meant nothing to me. You know, like, he's really done nothing. And it's true. You see, I was like looking at the situation from different perspectives. How he pointed out how he's kind of in the middle, being a black Jewish kid. You know, because he, he was never really accepted into the Jewish world the way people think he did, he was. And blacks always kind of put him in a position like he isn't black enough or he's not really considered black. And he always, pro, you know, appropriate himself with being black. And that's what he says, I appropriate myself from being, uh, you know, being black. That's what I appropriate myself. And it's, it kind of hurts me sometimes. He like, he said, like now I, I got artists of the decade and they didn't even say, oh, this, you know, the black, the first black artist to win, artist of the decade, rap artist of the decade, and all this stuff. Um, he's like, they never put him in there. They just say Drake wins, artist of the decade. You know, but if anybody else got it, they'd be, oh, this is the first black artist to do such and such. And he just don't get the same respect from the brothers that he thought he should get or he feel he deserved or he earned. They don't give him that credit, you know, they, and that kind of hurt him sometimes. You can tell he's emotionally hurt by some of these things that he felt like he should give, but he's like, I know people ain't going to have no pity party for Drake. I'm just saying, like, things do bother him. So it's not about people who say, man, you got money, you know, like, you should who cares about that? You know, that's just how it is, you know, when, um, when people see you, and they see your spirit, they see the type of person you are, or they see the type of, you know, human being you've become. 
all of these different things, you know, it's, it's very hard, it's very difficult for others to see someone else being, you know, in a different situation. Like now, he's like, the reason why, he, is, he gave the real reason why he didn't bring his child out and because he didn't have the paternity test right away. He wanted to make sure that the kid was actually his, you know, but I don't know how, you know, how true that is, but I believe him. Um, he was saying that during that time, he wasn't a hundred percent, you know, a chick tried to pull it up with me and trying to say, you know, just to see how I would react, you know, some, you get some of these girls out here and, you know, they see you as a way out, mail ticket and, you know, or sometimes they just don't know. You know, you got a girl out here, you know, they doing casual sex. <laughs> they casually just don't know. So in that perspective, she really just didn't know. So she didn't even bring it to me. She had one of her friends bring it to me, like bring it up to me and all this stuff to see how I would react to the situation. And she wanted to wait and see, you know, when she had the baby, you know which way she was going to go with the story, you know. She didn't know it could have been, it could not have been. She wanted to, you know, make sure, so. She went in the direction she did, and that was the, the bottom line to the subject. And it turned out that I wasn't. And I'll be like, that baby looked like he from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Guatemala. <laughs> I was I'm in the clear. So, but anyway, I was ready to deal with it. But I'm not going to go and make announcements until I get facts. And that's what he was like. And like he said, he, he's still not going to introduce his kid to the world because the world's crazy. You know, he's like, oh, he's a co-parent and he can't be around his kid 24-7. You know, his kid's in another country. And, you know, you don't want somebody to, you know, try to come up or maybe do something to his kid or, you know, something like that. So, why would he want to expose his children to that? Or his child. So, he chooses not to have his kid's picture on the internet. Or anywhere. He hasn't even brought his kid out like that. And I understand that. And I agree with his assessment of Kanye West and the Pusher situation. A lot of you guys see him like, oh, Drake said he took the L. Oh, run. See, he told you. And Drake even though he lost. He just said he lost because he stepped out of it. <laughs> the guy didn't bar for bar me. Like, he's like, he didn't out bar me. At least I know, like, the guy didn't beat me, <laughs> like, in a rap battle. You know, he just... I, he just outslummed me, you know. He just did the ooh ah shock of the moment. This guy has a baby, you know, and it's like I can't follow that. He came with some Maury Povich type stuff, but lyrically he wasn't touching Drake, and I knew that. And I'm like, well, this guy ain't touching Drake, so why are we even having the conversation? But it was the sensationalism that is good for clickbait. You know, people, he's, hey, Drake got a baby. Whoa, he bust Drake out. He won. So nobody, rem you know, remembers that the song is just basically trash. And the fact is, what was behind the whole thing anyway? What was the beef about anyway? What is Pusha beef with Drake? He don't have one. He don't have one beef with Drake. He had a beef with Lil Wayne, then he started going after Drake for no reason. So none of it was valid. None of it was valid. Pusha has no reason. It's just pure jealousy. And 
like Kanye said before, like, man, you know, I love this guy and all that. Drake don't believe it. He's like, look, you backing a guy who who hates me for no reason. I've never done I don't even know these dudes like that. Like, like I don't know you enough to for you to have this type of animosity towards me. I've never done nothing to you. I barely even know you. He's like, I used to be a fan of the Clips record until I found out, you know, this guy was basically nothing. Now he don't like, I don't, I can't, you know, it's not real. <laughs> nothing he's talking about. <laughs> so, all of, even while he was saying he lost, he was taking great shots at, at the guy whatsoever. And I just brought back the reality. Push him mad at me. Like, I'm dissing him. I'm like, dude. I'm telling the truth, Push. All you rap about is dope lyrics. That's all you rap about is dope and that's it. I mean, you used to have some creative bars and all that, but who, what Pusha song you know? None. It's no Pusha song you really know. Now the Daytona EP and all that, that was cool, the seven songs. I was like, that was straight. That infrared beat was tight. But my thing is, you dissed the man for working with Quentin Miller. Then you went and worked with Quentin Miller. See, Push can't, he can't get over on me. Because I know what Drake know. It's like, dude, are you serious? You went behind Drake back and wanted to work with Quentin Miller. That's how you're going to throw Quentin Miller name in there because you made two songs trying to work with Quentin Miller to help you make the type of Drake songs that Drake and Quentin was making. And it didn't pop. But the song is all on YouTube. But y'all, the rap, y'all just hate Drake so much because he winning. And y'all just sick of it. Y'all hate him so much that y'all ignore the songs he did with Quinn Miller, trying to sound like Drake. And y'all know the songs is on the internet. I didn't play them for you. Quinn Miller and, and Pusha T got two songs out that's leaked on the internet. They got more they did. It's two already on the internet. Both of them trying to, he trying to be like Drake, Pusha. Making some Drake sounding music. After the man talking about some, I don't want to make music that sound like him. Yes, you did. It just didn't work. It didn't work. You jealous. I know a jealous man when I see one. They, they, a jealous man always don't want to explain their motives. Because they know if they explain it, it make them look ridiculous. And they don't want people to look at them and be like, is that what you mad about? So they just say, man, I don't even want to talk to it, man. I just can't stand the dude, man. Just, now nah, I don't even want to get into it. Because you know, ain't nothing to get into. This, the other person ain't caring about you. And what did Pusha Gang out of it? Nothing. He thought this was going to push him to the top of the letter. Have you heard anything from Push? He came out with two singles, right? That was on one of them that was supposed to be on... On um, Khaled, and then he came out with like two other singles or something, and then he faded away. One was all right, and the other was trash. That faded. Nothing could stick. All the songs you know from Push come from clips. <laughs> what happened to that boy? <laughs> Mr. Me Too. You know, I mean, all the songs he had, he had malice with him. And then the clips just reunited on some Kanye West. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so, there you have that. So, if y'all love Push so much, go buy his records. Because obviously you don't love him that much because y'all ain't buying his records. Y'all ain't downloading nothing.
So don't give me this he won stuff and talk about that one song. He wanted that. Y'all to go get Daytona. Y'all wouldn't go get Daytona. Y'all just kept listening to the story of Adion or whatever. That wasn't making him no damn money. <laughs> More like story of an idiot. So Drake did a good, you know, perspective of saying, you know, hey, this guy want to talk about people with MS and all this stuff, and you don't do that. And he pointed out the fact that when he beefed with Nick, with Meek, and they sat and talked about it, and he was like, man, you know, I beefed with Meek, and Meek was, you know, surrounded by real goons. You know, and with Meek, that was some real situation. Like, that was, a, like, Meek was really that dude. But even when they were going back and forth, they made, they had... You know, it was just unspoken word. Like, they ain't keeping contact, but Drake didn't put Nikki in it, and he didn't put Nikki in it. You know what I'm saying? When they dissed each other, they, they automatically, without talking to each other, knew, let's just keep Nikki out of it. He kept Nikki out of it. So, that was that. Now, my whole thing in this whole matter, because a lot of people love to make up situations and go down this road, that when Drake was in the Meek Mill thing, I got adopted and sucked into the Meek Mill Drake situation. And then it became a situation where Meek's people and me had prop. Y'all don't know how real that thing got. It got to the point where they somehow, I don't even know how they did it. I don't know if it was on. They DM'd me somehow and sent me an old address. Not an address I'm at now, but an old address I'm saying. Now, I'm just going to send you this. Now, you better keep me name out your mouth. So now I'm just letting you know what time it is. It's gotten to this point. You want to still keep me name in your mouth and blah, 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 and put up my, like an old address. I haven't lived. I think that was like two addresses ago. And it's funny because people think like Google have my address or something and they don't. That's, that's the weird thing because I never changed it. So with Google deal with, with Gmail and everything's electronical. So, my, 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 you know, living address, that's up to me if I really want to change it. I don't need them to send me anything in the mail. So, like, if I need a W-2, so I can get all of that electronically. I don't need them to send me. So, it can have my old address on it. And that's the way I'd rather keep it. So, when people go looking up my address on Google... And stuff like that, they get the wrong place. And I'd be like, man, y'all crazy. Because that I don't live there. <laughs> I feel sad for the people that do. Somebody come there looking for me. I'd be like, man, dude, I haven't lived there in like, like 2012. <laughs> dude, I wasn't even there long. But it was, it's weird. But I was like, I didn't even respond back, but I got the message, you know, and we had a lot of those messages going back with them and his people. And then they even went and decided they want to get on the YouTube thing and do their thing. So they created their own little channel or whatever and started trying to make videos. So it, it was crazy, man, during that time. But I was defending myself. And it was just like that situation there. I'm just like, I ain't finna let y'all walk over me. <coughs> <coughs> like, they back was against the wall. And they felt like, that's it, it's over. Which he was, man. He was hanging on by one finger off the cliff. But, you know, he, he found the lane, he got in it, 
And now they in this prison reform thing and more power to them. So, I understood what Drake was saying. I understood what the interview was about. Kudos to him for being man enough to sit there and, but two and a half hours, jeez. I didn't think that was warranted. <laughs> it should be as long as this video is. And definitely support the page, man. I want to see you guys in the stream lab. Definitely hitting up the stream lab, leaving me messages over there so I can answer your questions. Um, that's clicking the link in the description box where it says donate. You click that and you go ahead and leave your message. Or if you just love Cash App, you can hit me up on the Cash App. You know the name, Carcino. K-R-C-E-N-O. -K -E and on that note, I'm out.